Hello, we're back for part two. We're going to keep the conversation going of the Bible says this. What say you? Psalm 33 verse 4, the A clause says, for the word of the Lord is right. I'm talking about the upcoming elections. I'm talking about the two pe people who are running for the office of the presidency of the United States of America, uh, Hillary Rodham Clinton and Donald J. Trump. Hillary, the first woman to be uh, at the top of a ticket, and Donald J. Trump, the first businessman, at least in my lifetime, to be running for the office of the presidency. And the issues that I'm talking about is I can't endorse a either in terms of telling you who to vote for. I, I, look. Uh, 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 cause because of the Johnson Amendment, I don't want to lose my 501c3 status. I can't weigh in on, uh, you know, who you should vote for, who you shouldn't. But as a Christian, as a believer, I can speak from a biblical perspective. The Bible says thou shalt not shed innocent blood. The Bible speaks against offering children to Molech. According to the scriptures, abortion is sin. And I said in the last segment that the Hyde Amendment, since 1976, it has been in place, and the Hyde Amendment have saved the lives of uh, over two million babies. Two million human beings are alive today because of the Hyde Amendment. Two million, one in nine poor kids on Medicaid owe their lives to the Hyde Amendment. The original Hyde Amendment was passed September the 30th, 1976, by the House of Representatives by a 207 to 176 vote. It was named for its sponsor, Republican Congressman Henry Hyde of Illinois. God bless you, Henry. Uh, the measure was the first legislative success by the United States pro-life movement, especially the committee, the National Committee for Human Life Amendment, led by lobbyist Mark Gallagher after the striking down of anti-abortion laws following the 1973 uh, U.S. Supreme Court, you know, the court case of Roe v. Wade. Congress subsequently altered the Hyde Amendment several times. The version uh, in force from 1981 to 1993 prohibits the use of federal funds for abortions, except where the life of the mother would be endangered if the fetus, the little one, were carried to term. Okay? October 22, 1993, President Clinton signed into law the Departments of Labor, Health and Human Services and Education and Related Agencies Appropriation Act 1994. The act contained a new provision of the Hyde Amendment that expanded the category of abortions for which federal funds are available under Medicaid uh, to include cases of rape and incest. So he expanded where you could use the Hyde Amendment but he left it in place, saving uh, from 1973 uh, uh, until now, from 1976 until today, some two million lives. You may be alive today because of the Hyde Amendment. Well, uh, abortion policy, Hillary Clinton keeps on talking. I want to read this article. It says, on, on the campaign trail this week, Hillary Clinton is zeroing in on the little known federal policy that makes it nearly impossible for Im impoverished women to get an abortion. Clinton has repeatedly referenced her support for repealing the Hyde Amendment, the very amendment that her husband, when president, did not repeal. A decade old budget rider that prohibits federal funding from covering abortion services. In practice, Hyde ensures that low-income women can't use their Medicaid, taxpayer money, plans to pay for an abortion, leaving them stuck, paying hundreds of dollars out of the pocket. And as a result of the Hyde Amendment, babies have been saved. Lives are saved. Hillary wants to do away with this all together. And not only does she want to do away with the Hyde Amendment, but religious beliefs, quote, have to have to be changed. New video highlights Hillary's abortion extremism. Now, listen to this. This is a quote. Um, 
The reality is that Hillary Clinton supports abortions through all nine months of pregnancy up to the moments before birth. Now, this is according to, let's see, uh, a new video uh, by American Values Actions highlights an issue on which uh, the, uh, the media has been mostly silent. Hillary Clinton's abortion extremes, extremism as seen in her own words. And this is what she had to say. And this is uh, AVA senior fellow Dr. Uh, Charmaine Yoist, Y-O-E-S-T, noted, uh, uh, noted a profound difference between the Democrat nominee for president and Republican Donald Trump on the issue. He says that Hillary supports abortion up to birth. While the media is busy taking jokes, making jokes about Donald Trump when he, he had the rally, when he spoke about the crying baby, they're quiet on Hillary Clinton's extreme position on abortion. Hillary even said this, make no mistake, when Hillary Clinton says religious beliefs have to be changed, she means mainstream American voters deep, deeply held religious beliefs, not hers. They need to be changed on the issue of abortion. Now, if you go along with that, then you should vote for her. But if you believe that all human life is sacred, even the life in the, in the womb, then you shouldn't vote for someone who believes that abortion uh, shouldn't, uh, uh, that abortion uh, should be carried out up to the up to birth, but vote the way you want to. But I'm speaking to Christians who have a Christian heart. And if you believe that the scriptures are, are true and if you believe life is sacred, then you won't have to answer to me when you go in that voting booth, you're by yourself. But when you stand before the Lord, we all got it. We got all got to answer uh, for the Lord. And, uh, and as for me personally, I've always taken this position and uh, uh, come after me on it if you want. But my position is if you are for the extermination of the most innocent in society, if you are for the murder of the least of these then you will never, whether you are a Republican, a Democrat, independent, whether you're white, black, whatever, you'll never get my vote. That's just me personally. But hey, those who are watching, you have to vote your convictions. And, uh, and if you can read the Bible and read the scriptures and, and see how God loves everybody and you, and you believe that black lives matter, even black lives that are unborn, and you believe that all human life is sacred, then that should, that should, uh, that should, uh, uh, affect the way um, uh, you vote and, and maybe it will or maybe it won't but that's up to you you vote any way you want but I, 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 I want you to know that these are some of the real issues that are out there the Hyde Amendment saves lives one candidate is for leaving it in place if not even strengthening the Hyde Amendment uh, the other candidate is for doing away with it all together that means the one in nine who are alive today, the 2.13 million who are walking around today won't be alive if the Hyde Amendment is done away with in the future. And I believe that even if you're poor, even if you're on Medicaid, even if mom is struggling, and she's on the taxpayer's dole. And she doesn't live in a nice neighborhood. As a matter of fact, her zip code may be the zip code of people where just about everybody's on welfare. Even if she was born on the wrong, uh, con uh, that child was conceived on the wrong side of the tracks. And if that child falls in the category where they're seven times more likely to do this, eight times more likely to do that, a hundred times more likely to go to jail, they, 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 they're, they're probably not likely to go to college. They're not likely. They're not likely. They're not likely. I still believe they have a right to be born. And I still believe that birth gives them a chance. I still believe that the God of the Bible loves the poor kids in the wombs of mothers on Medicaid, just as he loves the kids in the womb of mothers who are 
filthy rich who can afford all of the amenities. I believe that the children all belong to the same God. As a matter of fact, I read in the Bible where the God of the Bible said in the book of uh, uh, Ezekiel, all souls are mine. All human beings are God, rich, poor, praise the Lord, white, black, Hispanic, Latino, you name it. They all belong to God. So, you know, there are those who say, we're going to make it easy. And I don't understand. I'll tell you something I don't understand, Gary. I'm going to tell them I don't understand. This may make the cut. It may not. I just don't understand how you can stand up before an audience and say to the audience, I'm going to, re I'm going to repeal the law that will guarantee that more people who look like you are slaughtered. More women get a chance to kill their unborn babies. And the, late, the, the very group of people of the darker hue who she's targeting applauds it. I mean, I'm going to kill you. Yay! That's something wrong with that. But that's what happens when you do not like to retain God in your knowledge. When you don't like to acknowledge the Lord in your thinking. The problem with failing to believe God's truth is what's left. See, when you fail to believe God's truth, you're open to believe anything. That's the problem. The problem with taking the Bible and closing the Bible and leaving the Bible out of your politics, you will vote against your own self-interest. You'll make a fool of yourself. You'll become a useful idiot. A person will tell you that I'm going to kill you and you'll cheer them on. A person will say, I am going to kill you, check this out, and get you to pay for it. And you'll do it. That's what happens when you push the God of the Bible aside. Now, I'm coming back with part three because I have some other things I want to talk to you about. You know, uh, not only the Hyde Amendment, but hey, preachers, preachers, wouldn't you, wouldn't you like to be able to just speak to political issues? You know, for over 200 years in this country, from the pulpit, preachers could speak with conviction and power without fear and say what they believe with regard to those who were running for uh, public office. Then in 1954, the Johnson Amendment was put in place and the Johnson Amendment uh, served as it is applied to silence ministers, especially conservative ministers. Now, if you're on one side of the aisle, you can bring the candidate into your church. Now, you know what I'm talking about because you know I'm a brother. I'm a brother. My mama and daddy was black. I'm a whole brother. I'm a brother, 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 brother conceived, brother born, brother bred. When I die, I'll be brother dead. You know I'm a brother. And you know as a brother, I grew up hearing speeches from the pulpit from candidates, all Democrats, saying vote for me, and we were told as little children, especially in the South, I can't speak for everywhere, but you know that I'm telling you the truth, you know that I am. Hey, you know, uh, we vote a certain way, we are this, so we vote, we are black, so we're Democrats, we vote. Now I'm saying vote any way you want, but at least let your vote be, let your reason for vote, voting be something other than, as someone said to me the other day, I voted a certain way because I was told that I should vote that way. Come on, you're grown. Think. Examine the issues. You owe it to, we owe this to all of the freedom fighters and all of those who gave their lives for us to have this sacred right. Don't just vote, but cast an informed decision. Why do you want to cast an informed decision? Because you're going to have to live with it. Or in the case of the unborn, not live with it. So uh, I'm coming back. I have something else to tell you. Now, my friends, <laughs> this is Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr. And the Bible says this. What say you? <laughs>